Hello, it's Mark O'Mara here. I'm a teacher and I just want to tell you a little bit about what a blog is and why you, why you might want to use it in your classroom or why you should use it probably. Uh, I'm not going to tell you every single thing about how blogging software works because that is there's just so much under the hood but I'm going to give you the basics. So the basics so far is that this is my blog. As you can see it's up there at redspacerocket.com but you can also get them Depending on where you teach, lots of areas and states have free platforms for teachers to use. I use my own because um, often they're provided by the sector you work in, and if I move between sectors, say from a government to private school or vice versa, I want to be able to take my resources with me. Because I have been doing this for eight years now, and I have 2,400 resources in there, and I'm not really keen to leave it behind on somebody else's platform, or for it to disappear when the funding disappears, which has happened to me as well. Um, you can get a blog of your own at somewhere like WordPress, and there are plenty of other places. You know, TypePad have quite a good offering. Uh, some people even still use Blogger, which is owned by Google now. It doesn't matter what you use. The basics are still very much the same. So what you want to think about the blog for is basically like a bulletin board. And I don't mean in the computer sense, but like a board you can put stuff up on. So as you can see, we've got a video that we watched in our history class about the worst jobs in the medieval ages. I've got another video on there which was for maths about how to use a protractor. I've got a list of the books that were available for students to read next term. I've actually got a thing I clipped out of the Australian curriculum for um, history so we could brainstorm how we could study these things. Um, and then we've got some videos that I made. Uh, I've got a list of projects to be working on. So it's not limitless what you can put on there, but there's quite a lot you can put on. You can either be the only author of a blog, and I have to say most of the ones that I've seen be successful have only one or two authors, but you can have five or ten, or you can have a whole class writing to a blog. Um, that, that's a discussion for another day, but this is how it works. Basically, if you can send an email, you can write a blog post. So I go up here, new post. I'm logged in, by the way. If you're wondering, can anybody do this? No, you have to have a username and password, but I'm permanently logged in. So here I am, and here is my test post. So I put it up the subject subject line, much as I would do in an email. I write, you know, actually I might have some text there, I go, that I can just paste in there. You can do some formatting, but you know what, I honestly think text is text. I'm going to file this under e-learning, and I'm just going to hit publish. And that's it. So there are people who say, oh, I haven't got time to blog or it's too complicated. You know what? You type in the subject line, you type in what it is you want to publish, and you put it up on your blog. You know, if a student does a particularly good piece of work, you copy and paste it in, up you go. You've, you've literally posted it in 20 seconds. You want to put a link to the video you just watched in class, in it goes. You want to put up a list so that people can have it. You know, I know there are learning management systems and stuff, but the beauty of having a blog, and by the way, I'm not saying don't use things like Edmodo and so forth, they're great, but this is good because any parent can have a look at it, any kid can have a look at it, you're sharing your resources with the world, you're using resources from around the world, you don't have to author it, that one about the protractor I didn't make, obviously I didn't make the medieval video, you can put your own stuff up there, this is my own stuff here. It's just a really good place to put stuff so that it can be there. Students can see it at home if they're sick, if they've missed some time. They can work. They can be independent learners and go back through the blog. And as you saw, it's really, really easy to post. Don't be intimidated by the hundred other things you can do. Just think what you can do. You know, can you just use it for a weekly newsletter? Um, and by the way, if I want to edit it, I just go back in, edit. Wait, wait, wait. There it is. And you know what? Since that was a test post, I'm going to move to trash, which means it's going. Sit here and wait for it. it. Seems to be a little bit slow. And now it's gone. I go back to the page, and there we go. That post is gone. So there's a little bit about blogging, and I hope that's helpful.